You know Africa, right? A land full of resources but mismanaged by the colonial and post-colonial governments with plenty of borders that, let's just say, don't make that much sense. Africa is full of diversity with many different regions. I mean there's North Africa, West Africa, South Africa, and East Africa. But what if it didn't just have to be a region? What if they combined forces into one super country that transcends national borders? I mean, the borders weren't drawn for their insight anyways, so who needs them? That's where the proposed East African Federation comes in. The EAF is proposed to be made up of Rwanda, Burundi, Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda, and also South Sudan and the DRC have joined too. This will make the proposed EAF an absolute behemoth of a country. Just look at this. It will by far be the largest African country stretching from the Atlantic Ocean to the Indian. It will also be the biggest in terms of population squeezing ahead of Nigeria and becoming the fourth most populous country on earth with around 315 million people. So if this country happens, it will make a splash for sure. But let's be honest, can it even happen? They are currently in the process of trying to integrate together. Right now they have the East African community, a union of sorts, and are trying to launch a common market. This will include free movement of labor, capital, goods, and immigrants across the internal borders of the EAC. It will also include a singular currency, the East African shilling, and growing their headquarters in their proposed capital, Arusha. With many different styles of government, levels of poverty and corruption, institutions, histories, civil conflicts, geographies, and just overall different countries, it will not be easy for these seven nations to integrate together, especially if they add more countries to the ticket. And it has not been easy already. They're already behind schedule. A constitution was planned to be written in 2021, but that didn't happen, so it was pushed to 2023. So who knows if it'll actually happen. The East African Federation would be a big deal if it were to happen. But why might these African countries give up independence and merge together? After all, these countries fought very hard for their independence from the European powers of the UK and Belgium, and I guess Sudan too. The idea of an East African Union goes back to the 1960s, right when these countries got independence. This union was proposed between the new countries of Kenya, Uganda, Tanganyika, and Zanzibar back when Zanzibar used to be its own country. It would have essentially been a smaller EAF or would have looked more like Tanzania today. See, during talks, Kenya did not want to give up the independence they had achieved and after Kenya left, Uganda didn't want to be isolated from the rest of the union so they left too. But both Tanganyika and Zanzibar were good to go in this union so they merged into the country of Tanzania. That's where Tanzania gets its name, Tan and Zan. The idea was then forgotten about since it actually happened and Tanzania was a remnant of that old proposal. The idea didn't spring back up again until the 2010s after some time had passed and the nations got a taste of what it was like to be independent. It was originally proposed between the three original countries including Rwanda and Burundi this time surrounding the Great Lakes region by one unified country. But why did they want to merge? Let's look at some of their problems in making nations. Corruption, poverty, lack of foreign investment from fear of instability, and border issues. East Africa wants a common market to grow which would make a much more attractive country to bring your sweet foreign money to. Most companies invest in the region anyways with the exception of South Sudan and the DRC. A unified market and laws would spread the development around East Africa and boost all their economies. Unified infrastructure would help them ship materials out of their country and even give the chance for Africa to grow its own manufacturing hub since many companies hate manufacturing inside of Africa from lack of infrastructure and corruption at their borders. It would increase the domestic investment in the whole nation. Some richer guys on the east could invest in the more poor west, and a new government with new institutions could hopefully do some serious work to stamp out corruption, although that would be quite the task. And it just gives East Africa much more leverage on the world stage. The countries have realized they are more alike than they are different, and have decided to partner together to get their voice heard outside of Africa. They originally didn't go ahead with the country because the whole process was halted in 2016 when a new member, South Sudan, had joined, and then again in 2022 
when the Democratic Republic of the Congo joined. These two countries are some of the poorest in Africa and the world, and need a lot of internal help from the EAC to kickstart this process of integration. Who knows how this will affect the timeline of actually integrating, but it could be halted even more if other countries join. For instance, Somalia has applied to join, but being in shambles, they're still waiting on that acceptance letter, with their application being frozen in 2019. And some other potential joiners are Zambia, Sudan, although they're being pretty opposed by South Sudan, and even Ethiopia. The addition of these countries, especially Ethiopia, could boost the EAF's power even more, but it's still all up in the air right now. So if this federation will be so amazing for the region, why haven't they done it yet? What are the cons to the EAF? Let's just say it, the proposed EAF is made up of many, many different regions, all very diverse from one another. How could this country look in both its land and its people, and does it keep it from the nation forming? The EAF would be an absolutely massive nation, taking India's spot as the seventh largest country worldwide. It spans from coast to coast and up the Nile River until it hits Sudan. It would mainly be a tropical country with some arid spots in the east, but it would be hot, sitting directly on the equator. To the west is likely where the EAF would get their raw materials. In the DRC, and especially the Katanga region to the southeast of it, there are bountiful amounts of metals, cobalt, copper, gold, diamonds, and of course, rubber too. Being part of the EAF, Katanga would benefit greatly by being able to export to the east rather than to the west up through this long Congo River. It might even leave the western part of the Congo undeveloped, having much less use for the rest of the nation. They do still have that fancy Congo River to encourage some development to the west though. Going eastward, there are two coastal nations, Kenya and Tanzania. They are much drier and bumpy, having the mountains rise them out of the equatorial heat. To the north is South Sudan, known for its tropical beaches and peaceful lands. Just kidding, they're known for getting blown to bits and barely surviving. It's also fairly tropical up here, discouraging development except for this one strip here called the Nile River. Having control over part of the Nile has already turned Egypt and Ethiopia against each other, and if the other part were to be in one nation as well, it would give the EAF the same power. And then, the heartland of the EAF is made up of Uganda, Rwanda, and Burundi. Here the land rises up and makes some cool areas great for farming and city building by the Great Lakes of Africa. Since they control the Great Lakes, Nile, and Congo rivers, the EAF would potentially have a huge amount of power over the trade flow of the region. They control the shipping lanes. And since one of Africa's greatest problems has been lack of steady trade, it could make the EAF a huge potential customer to future nations and firms. The geography is very diverse, but that's what you get when you combine a bunch of borders that weren't drawn by the East Africans, and makes a split between the East, West, and North of the nation with their own trade routes. But controlling the three separate trade routes in the area likely brings much more benefit than harm. The second part of the EAF is the people actually living there. A country isn't all just land. When the Europeans came to Africa, they kind of just drew borders wherever they felt like and it ended up creating some pretty ethnically interesting countries. What's better than seven different jumbled up countries? One massive jumbled up country. It could work creating an identity of a multi-ethnic union like the European Union but much more federalized. Hopefully they would also be able to keep this identity since it hasn't worked for some of these nations in the past. Rwanda had a genocide over the split between Hutus and Tutsis in their country. The DRC has had many different regions try to separate from their country. And South Sudan has pretty much been in violence ever since their independence in 2011. The EAF would have a population about a third of a billion people and rapidly growing, possibly hitting over 700 million by 2050. That is insanely fast and will not be easy to accommodate for the underdeveloped region. The people would be united through religion and language trying to form a national identity of East African rather than tribal or ethnic identity. 76% of the population would be Christian but a significant Muslim minority would exist especially in Tanzania and English, French and Swahili would become the most spoken languages with Swahili designated as the lingua franca. This would isolate Tanzania being a Muslim majority and the DRC with South Sudan who does not have a large Swahili speaking population. But those are some challenges you run into when you try to merge this large of a region together. It has hundreds of local languages, plenty of ethnicities, and a split between English and Belgian colonial effects. 
What they also have going for them though is what they call a youth bulge. Currently 65% of their population is under 30 and by 2030 it could be 75% under 25. There are so many kids being pumped out in this region that could have huge effects on their output in 20 to 30 years when these kids grow up. If it can urbanize enough and accommodate the hundreds of millions of new East Africans then the EAF would certainly be a force to be reckoned with if it doesn't combust internally. Just how would these countries integrate into one massive African economy? If they were to merge today, it would only be the fourth largest African economy behind Egypt, Nigeria, and South Africa, yet their plans are not for today. They would hope to become more and more relevant economically throughout the century, becoming an African powerhouse. So how can they do it, varying wildly internally? I mean the countries that are here have greatly different governments and economies. Rwanda and Kenya seem to be doing fairly well but places like the DRC and South Sudan are barely trudging along. Sadly they are acting more as deadweights on the EAC rather than contributing members and are having a hard time conforming to the economic standards which the EAC deems necessary. South Sudan needs to ask the other nations for aid in order to meet their guidelines and has already caused some tensions with countries still charging visas across the border. But since they have plans for free trade and free movement, they need to develop across the entire nation, hopefully by 2024 when they plan on distributing the new currency. The countries would need to give up monetary sovereignty, but I think that would be a great idea for the weaker nations to give that up since they have been battling chronic hyperinflation for a while now. In terms of infrastructure, the EAF would make the region so much richer. One project, the Lamu Corridor, would connect western supplies to ship out of Kenya in their busy ports. It would also connect Ethiopia to shipping outside of Kenya which would mutually benefit the two nations. But most of the people actually living here are still good old farmers. In order to actually make things and ship them off, you need a strong manufacturing industry. Luckily, manufacturing is on the rise and the nation would almost certainly export to China, India and the Middle East. The creation of these new jobs could help their poverty issue. More investment into the region while their youth boss is still growing could see a reduction in poverty that resembles China's in the late 1900s. With a common market, lack of insecure borders and proper large scale corridor projects, it is looking more and more likely that manufacturing and agro processing can become large industries in East Africa. No more corrupt cops taking profits at the border. And hey, exporting a bunch of things to the world has historically been the best way to industrialize and reduce poverty in your nation, at least according to all of these rich Asian countries. So is the East African Federation a good idea? I say yes, despite the many problems and challenges the new nation will face. It would give these small and relatively poor nations some leverage and talking power on the world stage both diplomatically and economically. It would likely become a major manufacturer for China, India and the rest of Africa enriching East Africa. If and it's a big if Somalia were to join, it could stabilize that nation and the world would cheer as the Gulf of Aden shipping lines would be free from harm and it would unify a region known for corruption and lack of investment creating a shared market, free travel and free trade throwing away the old borders of East Africa. This country would benefit the world stage if they could stay together, separated by demographics and its massive geography controlling three trade routes in Africa. If it were to happen, the EAF would certainly become an African power. If only they could just get together and finally write a constitution.